that was a bit early I guess. No problems, robots. I guess everyone has an interest in robot, do not we? Everyone is excited about robot. Robot I think is the coolest thing right now, do not you think so? So, today let us talk about robot and more specifically about Manav which you just saw right now. So, Manav is special in quite a lot of ways. So, we have Manav over here. So, I would really like to bring it up on the stage. So, we have Manav which is India's first completely made in India robot. So, whether we talk about uh, assembling of this robot or we talk about programming of this robot or we talk about designing of this robot, every single thing has been done in India itself. So, this is India's first completely made in India 3D printed robot and it has quite some capabilities. Right now, we have some time duration limitations, so I would not be able to demonstrate all of that to you, but let me just tell you how is it actually special. First of all, all the white parts that you can see over this robot is 3D printed. So, the best part about 3D printing is that if anyone wants a longer hand, no problem. If you want shorter legs, should not be a problem, we can modify it for you. Facial expression, you want it to be changed, you want it to look a bit more muscular, right now it looks really cute. I'm I am sure you might find it cute as well. So, we can change every single thing in this robot. Along with this, this robot, we started making this robot uh, on 30th of October, uh, which was last year and we came up with the final product just two months after that and let me tell you, two months is a very, very short duration for making a robot like this. And if I talk about the time duration or if we talk about the price of this robot, it is one tenth of what uh, the competitors are there in the market. So, the basic idea was to give those people a platform to research on which is both cheap, which is agile and durable because obviously we are Indians, we want durability at the end of the day. So, the thing is this qualifies all of those things and if I talk about the capabilities of this robot, enormous. It has two cameras right over there. So, it can do 3D image processing. So, it can not only know what is there in front of it, but it can actually uh, figure out the distance from anything in this room. And along with that, it has two microphones on either side. So, this slit we, which you can see uh, are for microphones. So, it can basically listen uh, what you are saying and along with that, it can actually make out where the sound is coming from as well. So, it is a completely 21st century robot. It is the latest robot in the market. So, I would request to take this robot from here so that I can actually go ahead to the real Thanks. topic that we have here. So, the topic of the talk today is how not to be a robot. Now, before going on into this topic, let me ask you, what is your contribution in being what you are right now? And by your contribution, I do not really mean by the sleepless nights that you had or the hard work you did. I am talking about the vote on which the, the the basic idea of going into what you are. If you are an engineer, who actually motivated you? Or was it your own idea at the end of the day? How many of you actually chose this path which you are right now? Not a lot of you, right? There are like 20, 25 percent people. I follow my will pick it up. So, will pick now the thing is, the basic idea is that we have been bombarded consciously and subconsciously since our childhood that the holy grail to becoming successful is going to a college, get a med degree or a uh, uh, engineering degree and then you get good pointers over there and you go for a job and that is how you become successful. Well, for some people it works out just perfectly fine, but some others it just does not. And because of that you end up getting a job which you do not like. And when you do not like the job which you are doing right now, your productivity reduces. You just work for your living. The innovativeness reduces because you are being programmed. You have not choose, chosen those path. And even if you have, the reality is maybe there was something else in your mind when you were a kid. And because of those programming or just like a robot or that bombardment of those thoughts, you have changed your mind. And you have actually left what you really wanted to do. And my dear friends, if you do not like what you are doing, you would not enjoy it. How many of you work eight hours a day at least? How many of you? How many of you get tired after eight hours of work? How many of you? And I am actually not able to see anything from here. So, 
I'm just assuming the number of fans right now. <laughs> so I can I can see actually a fair number of fans raising up. So there there are some people who work for 16 hours a day, 14 hours a day. I'm one of them. There are a lot of people like that. If you talk to about successful people, I'm not talking about myself right now. I'm talking about successful people. So successful people, they love the, what they do. And let me tell you a small thing which happened yesterday. So I was in this hall, 12 o'clock at night, and uh, people were just running here and there, and a lot of things were happening. The lights were being fixed. The mic was actually being fixed for this program. And every single person was running here and there. And the best part about that was that I was sitting at the back, and I was meeting every single person in this room. And it was 12 at night. They had to come, I guess, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning over here. And none of them actually uttered about being tired. Yes, they had a lot of problems because the things weren't working out the, th uh, the way they thought it would work. But they were excited about it. They love what they do. And by loving what we do, we can be innovative. And being innovative is very essential. Because if you are not innovative, you won't change. You won't evolve from your work. And if you don't evolve from your work, well, the world is changing. And if you don't evolve, you know what's going to happen. You're going to be left behind. And if you get left behind, that's not a good thing. The second point which I want to make right now, right here, is not everything that is taught to us is correct. Let me give you an example. Galileo. I'm, I'm sure you must have heard about him. Galileo actually was the first person who actually told us that uh, it was not the sun which is going around Earth. It is the opposite way around. And for this thought, many hundred, uh, like so many years back, he was jailed in his own house. And he was told not to say all these things to anyone. He was not allowed to interact with anyone. And if he did, uh, there was a chance of him getting killed. But now we know the truth is the Earth revolves around the sun. The same way, the theories, the science, which was 10 years back, 20 years back, is not necessarily correct at this point of time. We're constantly changing it. And because of the viewpoint, if, if a lot of people think it is correct, it doesn't mean that it would be correct. It is their viewpoint. And because of our system, because of our programming, just like robots, we are being programmed, I'm, as I'm telling you, we are being programmed to think in a specific way. Another example, I'm sure it must have happened in your home or when you were a kid. You are trying to find something in your home. You ask your mom, and she says, OK, it's in that drawer just n right next to the bed. And you go there, and you try to find that thing. It's not there. Mom says, uh, you, you again go to mom, and uh, you say, it's not there. Mom says, listen, don't be, don't be stupid. It is right there, and I'll come, and I'll find it for you. So she just comes there. She picks up that thing and shows it down to you. And you're like, where did that came from, really? So the, the basic idea is it's right there in front of you, but you are programmed to look in a specific way. Because your mindset is there to look into a specific way. You're, you're not approaching the problem the way it should be approached. Because if you see things differently, the things happen differently. As I was sitting in the first half of uh, this talk, TED talk, um, uh, the, the lady from uh, Brahma Kumaris, I suppose, uh, she, was, she, she, she told you to close your eyes. You were not seeing anything, but she was guiding you through that whole idea. She was guiding you, and she was storytelling you, and you were actually transformed into another world. You are not seeing, but still you are seeing, because it's your viewpoint. It's your perspective. If you remember, when you were a kid, and teacher used to ask a question from you, you were like, ma'am, 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 me, pick me up. I have the answer. Even if you didn't have an answer, you raised your hand. And as you grew up, the number of hands went down. You were worried about being wrong. You were worried about what will others think about us, because our perspective is narrowing down. And if we not, if, if we really, if we don't go through the right perspective, you won't be able to find the right solution. So my dear friends, if I talk about innovation, innovation is a very beautiful thing. And the beauty about innovation is its redundancy. You can 
for example, if I talk about any of the innovation, if I talk about making a car or making a plane, Wright brothers make, made a plane, and there were a lot of people who were making the plane at that point of time. And when Wright brothers actually invented the plane, there were a lot of people who were working on the plane on the same idea, but they quit. They left it. They thought, now he has made it, so there's no need for me to make it. And they left making the plane. The problem was they had one single narrow approach. They didn't thought of improving it. They just quit the idea. So my dear friends, as I told you, the beauty of innovation is redundancy. It's not just one way through which a problem can be solved. If it is solved in a certain way, you need to look widely and you need to analyze what are the other ways to solve it. Microsoft and IBM, there were two companies back in the era who were competing with each other. They just tried to make something just a little bit better, just a little bit better than, than other. And then Apple came in and he said, listen, I don't want to go the conventional way. I want to go the other way around because it had a wider perspective. It had a wider perspective about the problem, about solving that problem. And that's how they actually completely transformed how a computer works. And you are completely unaware that if you were to buy anything else from Microsoft except for the softwares, you might not be very comfortable. But with Apple, you are buying a lot of things from them, whether it's a phone, it's a laptop, it's a music player, anything, because they are innovative. Now, if I talk about innovation or if I, I'm talking about all these things, I'm not here to motivate you in any sense. I'm not here to actually tell you that you need to do this, you need to do that, but I'm here to warn you. Because the things which I'm making right now are gonna do the work which you are doing right now. Why? Because 90% of the people are doing tasks which are repetitive in nature. They're doing the very same work again and again. And as we know, robots are very good in that. Robots are very good in doing work very efficiently. They can work 24 hours a day. They don't have you know, emotions. They don't want tea breaks or coffee breaks or anything like that. They will work for you throughout their life. And they won't ever give up. So the idea is, if we don't transform ourselves, it's just not people who would be competing from us. It would be robots. And trust me, it's not a negative thing. It's not a negative idea which I'm planting in your head. What I want to say is, it's a tool. Robot is a tool. Robot is basically, it's a weapon. Use it in the right way and you would be just happy about it. And use it in the wrong way and you'll just cut your head. So my dear friends, we are living in a country which is full of potential. 50% of our population is under 25. That means that right now, whatever we are teaching or to whoever we are teaching will be in the workforce after 10, 15, 20 years from now. And when they will be, and if they are not innovative, maybe robots would take their jobs. And when robots would take their jobs, they would be jobless. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying we have to be prepared so that it doesn't happen. We have to be innovative. If they don't have jobs, they'll be in depression. We have some talks lined up for depression as well, I suppose. So yes, we do. So if they get into depression, they might, they might turn as antisocial elements. They might turn into those things which will drag the country down. It's just not about stagnating the growth. It's about dragging the country below what we have ever thought of. I just came across a news that Infosys actually fired like 1,000 employees or something like that, and they employed robot instead of that. These news are going to be very common very, very soon. We have to be prepared for that. We have to be innovative. We are teaching students to be what we don't know is going to happen. Do we know what's going to happen day after tomorrow? Do we know what's going to happen a month after? We don't. But we are educating them for, for this. And what tomorrow looks like, I just want to give you a glimpse of it. Tomorrow is full of innovation. Those who change with time, those who are innovative, will be the most successful people. They would be the people who would be leading the industry. And it has been like this before as well. There has been many revolutions, whether we talk about uh, the uh, machine revolution, 
or if we talk about the car revolution, if we talk about the computer revolution, all the revolution completely changed the way we work. Back in 90s, when the computer came in India, there were a lot of protests. I'm sure you must have heard about it somewhere. So they said, the computer will take our work, computer will do this, we'll be unemployed. And well, if, we, if it wouldn't have changed, it might have been so. But the thing is, we changed. And we'd, we are now doing the work with the computers and those work which were actually done by humans. And those humans are now doing much more better task than what they used to do. So we need to change the way we work. And changing the way we work is by changing how we educate our students for the same. So my dear friends, it's very important for us to think about what we are doing right now. I was hearing a talk, a uh, TED talk only. So in that, uh, the person said that if mosquitoes or uh, if insects, if I'm not wrong, if they, they completely vanish within 50 years, everything on Earth will disappear. And if humans were to vanish, every single form of life would flourish in another 50 years. The idea behind this is that we are very bad at handling natural resources. And so is the case with human resources as well. We need to think how we are handling it, how we're educating them for what they have to be. So my dear friends, I won't take a lot of time. I want to conclude by saying, I'm making robots so that you don't have to be a robot. Thank you, guys.